In this video, we're going to look at the improved tessellation options based on the previous video's work of the improved base mesh. Make sure you watch the previous ones in case you haven't. So let's get started. So I've created a few panels here and I'll show you what they look like. Let's first select this, select the second one, go to the tissue tab and say, make sure we have this selected. I wanted to select the right collection. So now tessellate. Okay. Let's hide our facade base. Right, so this is what we get, which is similar to what we did in the last video, ex except naturally with a better facade base, so the meshing is more even and more equally spaced. But some of them are still turning randomly. In the previous video, I did that as an effect because it was easier to, to sorting out and showing you how to rotate the panels properly. But let's do it in this video the way that it's meant to be done. So I'm going to turn off the tessellation, turn on our facade base. It's the wrong one. Too many now around. Is that the right one? Let's see, if I click on this tessellation, it will tell me facade base 006. Yep, that's the right one. Okay, so we want to first create an edge. Let's separate this face. And let's limit the number of floors, which should help us with these funny intersections that we're getting on the top. You go yeah so the top floor is a nice kind of mezzanine okay so now in here what we want to do is just create a seam somewhere so it doesn't matter where I'm gonna click on one so first I need to be in edge mode so let's click on one edge right click and mark seam then select everything you unwrap. We don't really need to worry about the accuracy of unwrap because with that seam everything should look pretty well and now if we turn our tessellation back on and let's go to the settings of the tessellation which are found in the object data properties all the way down there should be a, a sub tab called tessellate settings. So in here, what we want to do is change the rotation from default to active UV. And it should automatically refresh itself and already look significantly better because they should all be facing the right way. Great, so this is one type of panel. And I don't know if you noticed in the previous one, but I allowed there to be, to, for the floor slabs to be wet a little bit better via the facade. We can change that with the offset. So if I change the offset to zero, it's going to move all the geometry slightly in, which is not enough. So let's change this to negative one. So that goes further in. So now we can see the, ver the horizontals in case that's the kind of language that we're going after. Let's try a couple more examples. So I'm going to duplicate this tessellation. Let's hide the first one. And let me expand this window once again. Yeah, so we have all the settings set the way that we like them. The only thing we need to change is the component panel. So I'm gonna change it from panel one to panel two. Let me show you what panel two looks like. So panel two is very simple. It's a frame with the glazing and it's the kind where it seems more, where the panels seem more seamless on the outside so it doesn't have any expressions. It's so the glazing and the frame sits right underneath the glazing. Right, so if we go back to our latest tessellation, change component from panel one, let's get rid of it, and I'm gonna click panel two. And let's see what happens. And now we have our nice tessellation. Again, very straight, very simple, and it looks great. So then the last thing that we wanna do is try the same tessellation, but with the diagrid. So once again, I'm going to duplicate the tessellation. Actually, it needs to be slightly different. We don't duplicate the tessellation. We need a new base. 
So let's get our original base here. Shift D. Names are going, going a bit crazy. So I'm going to call this dot zero zero six diagrid. Okay. Have an extra dot in there. Let's get rid of it. So I'm going to turn off the other facade base. And all we need to do in here is add a subdivision modifier and then add a decimate. Change it to unsubdivide and change the iterations to one. Now we have really nice equidistant dag grid. Let me show it to you a little bit better. So that's what it looks like. And we may have some issues with intersections, so we may want to change the floors for the booleans to the new object, which is facade 006 dag grid. All right. So we're ready. So now we're going to use this as a base. So again, the same thing as we did before. We're going to duplicate the last tessellation, Shift D, Escape to keep it in the place. Turn the previous tessellation off. Go to the tessellation settings, which are under object data. And we're going to change this time the base to facade base 006 Dagrid. And what we want to make sure is to click this icon right here, which says use the modifiers. So once we do that, we should hopefully be able to see our DAG grid mesh. And here it is. Now let's turn on the preview. And you see those are the exact same panels that we had before, just on a DAG grid. And the last thing, because we have two panel types, let's duplicate the tessellation once again. And with the DAG grid, let's use panel 1. Let me find panel 1. Just to see what that looks like. And let's turn off. So everything is turned off. Yep, so that's it. And you can see we have a very kind of interesting now uh, and uh, linear tessellation where one side is accented much more than the other side. Of course, we can play with the settings. For example, we can shift the active UV by one. Let's see what that does. And you can see by shifting it by one, each panel rotated 90 degrees. So now we're accenting the other edge of the DAG grid. Okay, so now that we have everything nice and modeled, let's just display it a little bit better by duplicating and by putting all the towers one next to the other. So we have a clear understanding of how they vary. All right, so one, one thing I'm going to have to do is apply the floor plates. So I'm going to shift D and duplicate these floors in place. And let's apply the array and apply the boolean. And now let's move that over 150. Okay. Let's get the next tessellation. In fact, let's move this tessellation over one. And yeah, we have some floors that are kind of hidden there in there, but they're not in the right place because I think they're using the base. That's fine. We can see the we can say these are floors or ridge. Let's turn those off. And let's continue with the other tessellations now. I'm gonna move this tessellation over 150 units this way in the negative. Duplicate the floors once again. And let's get the last tessellation. There it is. And once again, let's duplicate both the floors and the columns. Because I see that I've forgotten the columns. Shift D 150, negative. Shift D, 150 negative, Shift R to repeat. And let's just have them aligned better. So I'm going to move this one over 300 units. Actually, it's 450 units. And let's move this 150. Now let's add a base. Put that base at the bottom. Scale it. And for these kinds of comparisons, 
I like to keep the context relatively neutral. Uh, I just like to add a bit less roughness so there's there's a nice reflection and let's make this a little bit darker. So we're not focused too much on the context, we're focused more on the tower and the differences and the similarities between the different concepts. Thank you guys for watching and please let me know if you have any comments, any questions and if you'd like to support the channel, the link for the download for the file is available in the description below for small purchase.